What's up, y'all? This is Brent Densford, and you are listening to the Wheel and Trigger podcast. Uh, this episode, I had the very nice pleasure of sitting down with uh, the Austrian, Mitcha Vidmeyer from S-Works. He came over uh, to race the Masters of Dirt this year. Um, and, man, what a good kid. We got to learn a lot about what it's like to be an Austrian RC racer and, and to be who he is. So I hope you guys enjoy. Sit back, relax, listen. That was pretty close, right? Yeah. Oh. Right. So, so here we are. Um, we got Mitsu Wit Vidmar. Yeah. Right. That's correct. I'm getting better at it. The of more, course. The more I say it, the the better I'm getting at saying your name. It's uh, a lot of people have been saying it wrong. Yeah, but I mean, it's like for me, it's like the English um, spe- pronunciation of it. So both versions are correct for me. So at this point, you're just like you answered to Mitsu and and Mika. Yeah, it's just part of it. Part of having that name, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so the the last name though, what was what got me was spelled with a W, but it's almost said with a V, like Vidmar. Yeah. Instead of Widmar. Yeah. Right. So it was uh, that was just something new, like uh, to to learn that. I mean, most people would want to say it right, um, but I think in the grand scheme of things, though, um, people are gonna say it how they read it. Yeah, I think that's like also kind of um, the switch of um, like German and English, so that there's just you pronounce the letters different. Yeah, yeah. So you're uh, you came in for Masters of Dirt. Yeah, and um, you've you've been staying at my house. You've been my guest at my house, and uh, so tell me, like, you this is your second time to America th- this year, but your second time ever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so what's, uh, what's your experience been like, uh, not just the racing side of things, but like, what, what do you think about, uh, you were in Arizona the first time? Yeah. So first of all, I think I experienced a really great hospitality from your side. I really enjoyed the time. It was amazing to be here. And then, yeah, I think it's very different to Europe, like the, the houses, the cars, like the the location, like the environment and stuff. It's pretty different. And it's cool to see um, something different and to compare like how it is at home and how it how it is abroad. Um, so yeah, that has been pretty cool so far. I, I really like the, like the, big, the big cars. That's yeah. something we don't have in Europe. And um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that was the running joke with us this week, last <laughs> week. I, it's like, hey, you want to take, like, you want to go get something, or you want to drive, and you're like, uh, your big truck. <laughs> and so you know, I know you guys. From my experience of being over there, most vehicles are mid sized to small. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of just standard. It's just what you guys know. You know, your your semi trucks, your lorries are like our box trucks. You know, yeah. we have long, big semi trucks, fifty three foot boxes, and you guys have what we would call consider like a box truck yeah i mean i i compared your truck to uh, i think the biggest car i ever drove in europe <laughs> and it was just <laughs> even bigger and yeah just i didn't know how to how to um see the front and stuff i think maybe <laughs> the total length or the high would be probably okay but the front end it was so far away so i i couldn't really see it where I am. So. Be tough to judge that yeah. for you, right? Well, believe me, when I first started driving that truck too, it was like, <laughs> wow, it's, it's a beast. <laughs> um, so what about like the structures? Like when we go to Europe, mm-hmm. we're in awe of some of like the, just the structure, the how, um, how, how the construction was and how old buildings are and stuff like that. I mean, obviously the, the places in Europe that I've been as of late were Spain, uh, Italy, stuff like that. And they have a lot of historic looking buildings, but in, in all of Europe, it seems like there's a lot of old structure, a lot of old, you know, 
looking style buildings. What, <clears throat> what do you think is the, uh, like, what do you think of American uh, structure and, and, and the way we build buildings and homes and everything else? I think if you like compare the homes in Europe, I f- it, the European houses are look more like they are built out of stones and stuff. And if I compare to American houses, I know it's it's wrong um, compare, but I would say they look like more like paper houses. Mm-hmm. So it's like um, it's maybe they are not weak, but they look more weak and not so so hard. Yeah. So they have like. A, I don't know how to say like a more, de- more detail, not detailed, but more soft lines and buildings. I would say. And yeah, and I mean, of course, in Europe you have like old houses, you have new houses, you have modern houses. I think you have, if you want, you can see everything of that. But yeah, I think in Europe the the houses they look more solid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I think that's probably a good comparison. I mean, it, it, there are a lot. You're, the homes over there are very close together for the most part, mm-hmm. and um, even closer than what I would consider close over here. Uh, but the, the the one thing that I, I and I don't know a lot about the homes, but mm-hmm. um, the one thing I can say about the construction is just like you said in in Europe, it looks just like it was made out of. Just solid stone everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere you go, it's like a, a carving in, in marble and, and yeah. rock, and it's 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 amazing over there. So we have like skyscrapers. Everything's made out of glass. Everything looks like it's glass, and um, you know, it's it's a lot different. So I, it's interesting to to want to you know to hear what people like yourself that yeah. see it for the first time what you think of it. So yeah, <laughs> what do you think of the food? Um, I think it's like very tasty. I really like the food, mm-hmm. but I think it's like um, if you have like a lot of more fast food, which is like it tastes very good and I really like it. But I think it's kind of a bit more unhealthy than Europe. Oh, that's it, <laughs> 100%. because I think also if I compare the food, it's like in the US, it looks like it's a bit more oily and stuff. And it's less in Europe. Of course, you can in Europe. You can also get like American style food and stuff like that. But I think in general, there's a little. That's a little difference. I. It's like the best way somebody explained it to me when we were there was mm-hmm. meals are an event. You know, like uh, in yeah. Spain, when we were there for Worlds, they would. I mean, they open from. I don't know, like twelve to two. Then they close from like two to four, two to six, and then it's like six to midnight. And these are regular restaurants, whereas our restaurants close at like nine or ten o'clock. Most of them, you know, unless it's mm-hmm. a bar. And uh, it, it's like, a, and it's it's an experience. Uh, you know, you, you're, the food over in Europe is just the, the way that they handle it is so mm-hmm. different. Um, and I like the fact that they take breaks in between. They they don't just stay open from one point of the day till they close yeah, at, at yeah. night, like they'll just shut down for a couple hours so that yeah. the employees can eat or rest or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, some of us in America, some people in America be like, well, they're just a bunch of sissies. <laughs> some of us are like, man, that would be nice. You know, if we actually got a little break midday. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the food here, I, the flavor of food here is big because we have lots of unhealthy food for sure. But I think the, f- the European flavor is good. You know, I mean, we we like German food over here. Mm-hmm. We, we uh, my family likes to go and like find a good German Spetzle. restaurant. Spetzle. <laughs> I'm trying to learn a Spetzle. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's. I think that there's a lot to be said for the different cultures. You know, like mm-hmm. you, you guys have a a way of doing things, and oh, it's trust. very hard to probably get used to, you know, certain things. You know, you're, you're going to be here. You're going to be here basically, a, you're here a week, so you're leaving today, where we actually have a, a long trip up to Charlotte, yeah. right? So um, you've been here a week. And uh, so what is your favorite out of all the food you ate? I mean, you had like hibachi, you had cookout, Chick-fil-A. Um, I don't know all the foods, the, the different foods that you had. Like last night you had Top Golf food. Um, you know, like what, out of everything that you've eaten in the last uh, week, what's your favorite? 
I've, or even add in Arizona when you were there for um, the classic, the Cactus Classic. What what's your favorite food you had from the two trips? I mean, at the Desert Classic, it was definitely um, a Longhorn. We went there like uh, almost every evening to have dinner. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty cool. So there, I I ate um, a flow fillet with a sweet potato and a Caesar salad. Mm-hmm. That was pretty cool. And this time, I would say the w- Waffle House. <laughs> 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 last uh, last night was a really cool experience, and the food was also nice. So I think probably that was the best one this time, and even. L- also very close was um, the food last evening at uh, Top Golf. Yeah, that was also pretty good. They have good food. Yeah, for for a, a place like that where you you know it's all entertainment, they have really yeah. good food. But, uh, that was cool. Yeah, it's one of their. Uh, to me, that's that's one of the best things about going to Top Golf. I mean, yeah. their food is pff, on point. Yeah, that was also pretty good. So I, I think those two were like my favorites. Longhorn and Top Golf. Yeah, <laughs> and Buffalo <laughs> but, Waffle House, but uh, it must be night. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so we, we gave me to the the Waffle House experience at uh, three o'clock in the morning uh, of Masters of Dirt Night, and um, uh, unfortunately, you didn't get the full experience because the clubs had already, you know, everyone at bars and clubs already gone. It was a Sunday night. Yeah, but uh, I can't imagine how it is. <laughs> oh man, on a Saturday night at Waffle House at two o'clock in the morning, bro talk about you don't know what's going to happen you'd be eating and someone start rapping you'd be eating and someone start shooting you know <laughs> we were like pretty fortunate to be in a good spot and, you know have good food it was uh so it was you me dakota kevin abbott yeah that and, was good uh, what did you have i have, i had the same like you i can't what i had it. so i ha- can't remember the minute name but it was like a toast with bacon and egg on it yeah that's right we had uh like the Texas toast uh, sandwich, and then uh, and hash then browns. W- yeah, yeah. So you had your first uh, first experience with that. That so. was funny. Um, wish that waitress would have been a little nicer. She just seems like she hated life. Huh? She just hated life. The waitress. Waitress. The lady that gave us our food. Ah, she. She's yeah. not in a really good mood. She was a bit. It looked. It looked like like she was um, unmotivated. <laughs> she wanted to go to bed. You, want, you call it unmotiv- unmotivated. I call it pissed off. I, I don't know okay. which one it was. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be more kind. Yeah, well, sometimes you got to call a spade a spade, you know? <laughs> um, so, what what do you do at home when you're not wrenching, racing? Like, what's your, what's your fun time? That's funny because I'm almost... I almost only do that because I'm like the whole day at work and when I'm off from work, I prepare my cars, I go practicing, I go racing. Now I have a girlfriend, so I spend a lot of time with her. But I mean, that are almost the main things I do. Sometimes when I have time, I do something with friends. So now next week, next week I will be on vacation at home with my family. Right. So I will do some stuff there. But in my daily life, it's... Work, I'll see girlfriend. That's it. So you actually, I mean, like you enjoy it. That's that's what yeah. you want to do. That's yeah. You, not just because it's work, but like you enjoy it to the point of. Of course, I think I I grown up with RC, so it's part of my life, and s- I really like it. I, I mean, if I w- wouldn't like it, I wouldn't do it. So for me, it's okay like that. Yeah. Well, it. The fun, the fun for me, kind of went away over the years just because it was just too much, and and I I could see where someone in your, I mean, how old, you're 21, right? Mm-hmm. So it's someone at 21 that's working in the industry, sponsored driver, traveling the world. Um, I could see where it's still very enjoyable for you know, and I I know a lot of you guys, a lot of the racers who who are doing this. It's a mm-hmm. you're very fortunate in, in a lot of people's eyes. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, for, so for me, I just got so tired of it because I'm around it so much, and uh, I could not keep myself motivated. Yeah. But, you know, the, I took a long break, and, and I'm kind of getting back into it and enjoying it again. So, it, you know, I don't, I don't know how long I could be a sponsored driver. I guess that in my mind, I'm like, man, I don't know if I could I think about that. I don't, I don't know if I could do what you guys do. 
everybody like aspires to be that in this industry, but do they really understand how much work's involved? Yeah, I think it's many people don't see like how much work you put in to to do that effort. I mean, for example, also when I was at school and I um, went off from sc- from school for some races and stuff, I came back and then everybody said like, ah, you come back from vacation, you just chilled. And they don't really see that you you need to prepare the cars before. You have a lot of practice before. Then even at the races, you have very long days, not much sleep. So it's not that kind of vacation you have. It's it's hard work. It's a kind of hard work, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's not like physical labor, but it's like constantly yeah. doing stuff. You're rebuilding. You're, 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 you're trying to modify. You're trying to maintain. Yeah. And, uh, and then, you know, in your situation, you, you, you do a lot of R&D for S-Works. So it's not, like, it's not like you just go to the track, race, and go home, and you're, you're done. You, yeah. know, you go to the track, you race, you've tried. I mean, you, you've been practicing since Masters is over. You practiced all day yesterday. I know we've been working on a couple things that we, with the yeah. two-wheel drive. Of course. Um, you know, beforehand, you, I mean, it, you practice before you come. You practice when you leave. Um, you I know, mean, it, even after the race on yeah. Sunday, I practiced till the night. <laughs> I remember being behind the driver's stand and looking up, and there was like 10 people on the driver's stand after a 14-hour day of racing. I'm like, are you guys not fucking done yet? No. You know, <laughs> like, holy happened. crap, like, stop driving RC cars just for a little bit. Have a beer with us, you know. But, uh, you know, you look up there, and you're like, those are some dedicated people. Yeah. Those, they're dedicated you can tell by the results. You can tell by their, just the passion that they have, what they want to do, and, and that you guys want to win. And I've never got to watch you race until Worlds. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I don't. I personally don't watch a ton of racing online. Yeah, I don't have time for it. And when I'm at home with my family, the last thing my wife wants to see me doing is watching RC on YouTube or anything like that. So, yeah. um, but I got to see you and, and meet you for the first time in Spain. And we've been working together for you know quite a while this year yeah and um and i was i was thoroughly impressed i, I honestly thought you were just like mainly 10 scale mm-hmm. Thank but you. you did very well what what did what was your end result at worlds this year what did you what did you end up i think it was for place 46 46 in the world yeah i mean it i think it could be better because my last words in 2018 in australia i ended up in on place 28 so that was much better. But during qualifying, especially on the second day, I struggled a bit with my driving. I did too many mistakes. And in the final, we just chose the, the wrong tire compound. We went too hard on the tire, so I was struggling with grip. So that was a bit sad or unlucky, maybe. So because I think it would be that I had the speed or the car had the speed to be better, but just some other things doesn't went like planned. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it doesn't always. Yeah. But 40, of course. I, that, that's part of racing. I mean, 46 in the world is not bad. And even like, I'm a big Valentino Rossi fan. He's number 46. So, <laughs> that, and the funny thing also was like, when you enter the race, everybody gets a number. Yeah. And you also mark your number on the shot center. And I also had 46. Oh, wow. So I was like, <laughs> it's meant fun. to be, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, getting to watch you do that. And then for the first time I get to watch you run 10 scale at masters of dirt and you're a bad motherfucker. I mean, you, you're, <laughs> you, you can I wheel did. a 10 scale car. So, you know, I, I feel like right now, um, we're trying to make things better. I mean, you yeah. got a brand new two wheel drive, uh, the S 12 dash two. Um, so what, what did you think about the car on type of surface because it's the first time you've ever even experienced the type of surface we have at masters of dirt it's a, it's almost it's almost carpet with dirt surface I mean, yeah. it's very high traction what did you think about you know the car in it's to where it's at the stage it's in right now mm-hmm. on that surface and, and let me and, and even more so what did you think of the car on that surface versus what you had when you were at hobby action for the uh, Desert Classic in mm. March. So first of all, I think we I need to mention that like our car it was like it was developed and built for like 
indoor carpet racing, astroturf racing. So when we planned or developed the car, we had other um, points we focused on. And then when I went the first time here in March in uh, to the Desert Classic, this race was tough for me because it was like the first time driving on slicks with tire additive and all this stuff. So I think on that race, I struggled a, lo a lot or I needed to learn a lot about the tires to get used to that stuff, how to prepare, prepare them, that everything is the same each time and also to have like everyone the right tires like if you need an old set or a, um, or a new set or stuff like that right so at desert classic i learned a lot about that then i went to your race um i mean the dirt is completely different it, it at your track the dirt is much more consistent it's like every time this uh, every time you went on the track it was the same the grip was the same of course it got better and better every day but it there was there were no crazy changes like okay now it's like a second fast or a second slow or something like that so and i think i also this time i had the tires on point and i knew what to do joey bonos also helped me a lot and also spence Eckert. so i think that time on tires and stuff it was really good and i could focus more on the car and i think the car has a pretty good potential on that kind of tracks where I have su just some small points we need to improve to work on and test some different stuff. But I think if we get that right, it's, it will work pretty, pretty good. I mean, it's already working good. It's just like sometimes a bit hard to drive, especially when you're pushing on, on the edge. But I've, we have some good ideas and I'm pretty confident that we will get the car on point also on that kind of tracks. Yeah. I mean, you made a ton of progress even just this last weekend. So it, it wasn't like it was just all bad. You, you yeah, really, of course. You really I, had good runs, you know. Yeah, of course. I mean, I also need to say that I, I now, I think I, I know how to set up a car on carpet, on AstroTorf and that stuff. But I had like no idea how to set it up on tracks like that yeah. so that was also something i learned during the race now also after the ri race i tried many other setup options which i i personally thought wouldn't work on that kind of tracks but d especially during um, the after race test on sunday i found some stuff which which improved my times which improved also my consistency so i think i also did a step in, in the evening and then I feel like, yeah, the car was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, so the, uh, I mean, you made the A main <laughs> directly in four-wheel. Yeah. Um, and that, I mean, that class was just full stacked. I mean, you, yeah. you, everybody that made that main is an, a 10-scale a, a name in America, somebody that you would expect to be in the A main. Um, so for your first time here, you made that. And then in two wheel, you and Joe had an epic race, <laughs> people just going nuts and screaming and cheering. And, um, and you guys bumped out of the C to the B. I mean, it was, it was a low main, like it was not the A main or B main, but I think that was probably the most funny and enjoyable race I ever had because like the atm atmosphere with the guys outside, it was so cool. Also the fight with Joey, we had some cool battles, cool yep. corners together, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, I, that, that's the one thing Masters does, is it brings the best out of people. Yeah. And, they, and one thing that uh, we can definitely say is nobody has more fun than us at, yeah. at a race. So um, to have those guys enjoying <laughs> the sidelines like that and, and just you know cheering on their fellow racers and, and, and enjoying a battle like you and yeah. Joe were having... Uh, that was fun to watch, even for me. Uh, not, you know, that was like I said, that was a low, that was a C main. <laughs> yeah. They were cheering like you guys are tr going for a win, you know. Yeah, and that, uh, that was cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, what if you weren't doing RC? What would you be doing? Like, where, where what life path would you have been on if you know you're young? You you could have, you know, what what did you like in school or in in, in education? Cool. Difficult. I mean, in school, I was always thinking on 
about RC. Because so. <laughs> you've been racing how long? Uh, I started when I was four years old. So oh, geez. So you, your life, you're just like, I want to race RC cars. Yeah, That's so all you care that about. was like everything for me. Yeah. Um, I pro- I'm also very interested in like um, any kind of motorsports. I really like um, motorcycle racing, kart racing, Formula One, car mm-hmm. racing, rallycross, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So when I wouldn't do RC, I probably would try to do something of that. I mean, not like a professional, but just for free time to enjoy life and have fun. I think that would be, would be pretty cool. Um, and also, I mean, I, when I was yeah, young, I also played like football and did some other sports, but then there was some point I needed to like decide what is more important for me because if you want to do something correct i think you need to only focus on that it's yeah. like you can't do everything and then you are a bit good on that a bit good on that i mean if that is okay for you then it's fine but for me it was like if i i'm doing something i want to do it right and if i want to achieve something on a sport or anything i need to fully focus on that so i wish you would have gave me that advice about 20 years ago <laughs> that would have really helped my life path. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm yeah, that's something my dad always told me. He said, if you want to do something and you want to achieve something, you need to do it right. You need to focus on that, put all your energy on that, because you t- can't do everything and then just do it like half. Yeah. I mean, if it's okay for you, it's, it, I think that's a personal decision everybody needs to do. No, I... But it's it's great advice. I mean, you're. I would give the same advice to my my kids, you know. And that's. Um, I was fortunate to have a dad also that would you know push me and to do to do things, and we we had like interest, and it, it was good to do that stuff. But um, also, my dad was very similar, and it's probably the reason I do what I do is we we just kind of always, oh, well, why don't we do this also. You know, and we, you know, we just we did too many things at yeah. at the same time, and could never focus a hundred percent of our energy on just on one thing. Mm. Um, so it's one of those things where I think uh, I think you're hundred percent right, and and it's good to see you giving a hundred percent. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of people can't give a hundred percent, whether they got to go to school, whether they got to work. Um, you know, working in the industry is going to make it a little bit easier yeah, for so you to get, you know, for you to do. 100% towards RC. Of course. But, you know, it, it's still good advice, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so what's next for you? Like, you're you're going home today. You'll uh, you'll get home and you'll probably sleep yes. for a little bit. So I will arrive on Wednesday morning in Germany again. Then I will drive to Austria. Luckily, we have a national vacation on Wednesday. So I can, t- like, when I'm at home, I can sleep the whole time and recover. <laughs> and then I will be at work for first and Friday. Friday um, Friday after lunch, I will um, drive back to Germany, visit my family, have some family time just to relax. Because I think the last time they saw me, it's already one or two, month, two months, probably. Yeah, a little closer to my, just a little bit. There you go. Yeah, I think like two months ago, so they also want to see me again. Yeah. And then I also have a race in Germany. It's uh, called the Halloween race. It's close to Stuttgart. I think that's one of the biggest indoor races, or maybe the biggest indoor race we have in Germany. We have we will have a great competition. Your Neumann will be there. Then Clement Buda, our French SX driver, will come. I think maybe... One of the Killage brothers will come. So I think there will be a, a very high competition there. And yeah, then it's basically one week work and then I will be back in the U.S. for the Florida Cup of Champs. Yeah, so you're coming back. Um, go see my good friends uh, TJ and Daniel yeah. uh, Chavez down there at uh, Beachline for the Carpet Champs. Did, did you come last year? No, no, I wanted to come That's last right, this year. is your second time here, I should... Yeah, I wanted to come last year, but I had, like, last year I was still in my apprenticeship of work, mm-hmm. and I had um, the weekend, um, the Florida Carpets uh, champ started, I had, like, a um, kickoff of school, 
so I needed need, needed to stay in school. Yeah, I couldn't uh, miss the start of it, so unfortunately I couldn't come. But I said this year, one hundred percent, I will come. Nice. So you're you're a carpet guy, though. Like yeah. that's that's your jam. So you're going to be showing up, and then you're going to be running against Dakota and Dustin Evans, Spencer Rifkin, uh, Mayfield. Uh, Everybody. I, mean, I think also many European guys, so you right. can, like Olofsky, the all the X ray guys. Right. So you'll have uh you'll definitely have like like you said, the X ray guys, so you'll have Ty and who's the other guys that we need to worry about in X ray that's coming down? Who's I'm not sure if Bruno Coelho is coming. Maybe he's coming. I would assume he's coming. Then of course Martin Bayer, Max Götz and all the juniors from them, so I think I probably would say that that race is maybe kind of a small world championship on carpet. Yeah. Because, I mean, all the Europeans are there, all the Americans are there. Right. And it's a 10-scale world here. So, you know, now we're working towards worlds at Hobby Action next year. Mm -hmm. Um, So coming into that event, are you going to be, like, super confident you make the main you, you feel like you got a chance to win like well how do you feel about an event like that where you love carpet you know carpet you've not been to this race this race has been won by some really really fast guys mm-hmm. over the years i mean i think I've, i'm more confident than coming on like a dirt race in the u.s because i like you said i know i i know carpet but what I heard from the guy from the Europeans who went there last year, they said like the carpet was still more high grip than we have in Europe, mm-hmm. so it's still different. Then, for example, in, in two wheel drive, they use the pin tires in front, which has much more steering than we are used to in Europe. Mm-hmm. So they use the J Concepts or Proline tires. Um, so that are things I also don't know. I have no experience on on that. So. It will be interesting to see. Then also, like, I had, since since March, I had, like, one carpet race so far, um, the week before I come to Masters. And I will have another carpet race in Germany. And then it's ca- it's Florida carpet. So I don't have so much, had so much practice on carpet this year so far. But, yeah, I think it's... I I mean if I put in my cars for the for the first practice and then I get a feeling like how they're working and I think if they're working good from the start if I have a good starting setup I think yeah it can be work it can be a really good race I mean I hope to be in the A main in both classes so that's the main goal and when I'm in the A main I think everything is possible Oh I agree with that I mean carpet it's, I've never run it, and I and I watch it, and I'm like, wow. I mean, it's just so fast, and and everything happens like, bang, bang. Every, there's you got to be so ready to make a quick decision. Um, and me being a little bit older and not as good, you know, it, it, it's not really something that I'm trying to figure out this late in life. Yeah, you I know, mean, not competitively, anyways. I should say. Also, over the years, over the years, last years. The carpet races, the cars, they got so more, s- way more faster. So you have, like, higher engines, put more power into it. Also, like, it goes more like on-road racing with jumps. Yeah. Because I also remember, like, f- five years ago, when you were racing on carpet, you had, like, ride heights of 16, 17 <laughs> millimeters. Not anymore. No, in four-wheel drive, you are sometimes done on 11, 12. Millimeter thirteen, fo- two wheel drive fourteen, fifteen. Six, so it's. I ran fourteen yeah. this last weekend on my four wheel. So I mean, <laughs> it, it goes like it runs like more to on road on carpet, yeah. uh, on road with jumps, and even also when you look like on the times, it was. Uh, I, that's I think maybe probably for the general off road category, also on one eight. If you look like, looked on the times in the past, it was like, okay, if you are on the fastest lap, if you are like three or four tenths off, you've said, okay, no problem, because I do less mistakes or everybody was less consistent, <coughs> I would say. But now over the last years, everything got so close and competitive. Like, it's really like on-road 
just on road with jumps because you have like you need to be there on the fastest lap and the consistency is like that fastest lap and your medium time is sometimes just a few tenths off so it's like you need to do every lap the exact same speed no mistakes if you do one mistake it's like over so that's pretty tough and i think now a very high level of competition yeah yeah in carpet's getting bigger in america too so the the the, the americans are kind of i would say catching up in speed because they're having to race it more mm. we're losing a lot of our good dirt tracks and you know a lot more carpet tracks are popping up um so what's work what what's going on in s works is there is there something new coming out i heard that there's a possibility of a stadium truck being worked on yeah i think the next big step we will um, do is release a new four-wheel drive um we are working on it and soon i think we will have like the first prototype cars we can drive and see where we are and then if this project is like finished i think then we will also have a look on bringing a stadium drug because we think it's it's a cool class of course there's also a market in europe and the us and it's like a nice addition on the races to also get a bit more track time and stuff but we said okay two-wheel drive buggy and four-wheel drive buggy are like the main categories so we want to firstly focus on that make our cars working on every uh, working good on um in the classes and then when we are done with that then we focus on uh, another category yeah well and you can't run for master of dirt if you don't run truck that's true so <laughs> i hope next year i have a <laughs> truck so i can run for the title <laughs> all right now that's what we got to work on we got to say max come on now push the buttons and get a truck going yeah but with i think a truck is really close based on the two-wheel drive so we work now on the two-wheel drive and when this one is working pretty good and I think it will be easy to get a good track as well. Yeah, for sure. So what do you think about, like, what do you think about Worlds being at Hobby Action? Like, what do you think it's, what do you think it's going to be like? How do you feel other Europeans that don't race a lot of dirt, especially in 10 scale, are going to fare on a place like Hobby Action where the dirt, and, and we don't know what they're going to do to the dirt. We have no idea. They could bring in new dirt. They could glue it. They could leave it the same and let people have to, you know, figure it out. Mm. Like, what do you think is going to happen in, in a situation like that? I mean, so far the last time I was there, they built a really cool track. So they, I think they will have, like, a cool layout, nice charms, a good flow. I think that will be fine. And the dirt, it was like, for me it was like it was very depending on when was the la last watering, how good the dust was blown off the line. So that was like, the grip was not that consistent. I don't know if they would change something, but I think if they will leave it like it is, it will be a bit difficult to to know when to use which tire, um, a new tire, old tire. Um, how long before the run you need to do like additive on it and stuff so i think that will be difficult especially if you never w went there before and have like no experience i think one advantage for the Euro europeans which makes it more fair is i guess there will be like a controlled tire at the words because it's a word words normally you are used to have uh, controlled tires. I don't know about additive. Maybe we don't have additive or it's like a controlled additive. I don't know. But I think that will make it a bit more fair But because then everybody has like the same, the same tire base. Then it's just like you need to know when to use the new set or old set and how long put additive on before the run. So, But that makes it more fair. But yeah, I think it will be a a difficult race for sure and yeah but i mean if you want to be good at the world or to become a world champion it's always difficult so right so <laughs> <we're, we're coughs> all we heard about when we were getting ready for worlds a scale f you know fuel worlds um was no americans are going to make the final when it when it was uh now you know when we all knew we were going to Redavan 
and that that track surface and it was permanent track and that the guys had thousands of laps. I mean, imagine, imagine being able to go to that track and run as many laps as you want on the surface. That's almost identical to what you're going to be racing on for a world championship. Yeah. And I mean, that's all we heard was we'll be lucky to see any Americans in the finals. And we ended up with three plus three plus, you know, Ty Tessman who, yeah. who races in America predominantly, yeah. you know, in, in kind of our Northern American brothers up there. Um, but what do you think, like, is, is there going to be people saying that no Europeans are going to make the final for one tenth uh, two wheel drive worlds? Or do you think that's going to be p- what people are saying? It can be, I think. I mean, for Europeans, it will be, of course, it will be more difficult. But I think that's that's normal because every year the or every time the world is in a, on a different continent, it's in a different country. So every time there are some some people or groups of people who have an advantage. I mean, that's normal. But I think that's also like you switch the country every year or the continent every 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 time is like the best way to make it as fair as possible because yeah it is what it is um but yeah i think maybe there are w- there are people who say the same le- at the one tentos t- uh, words so the europeans are lucky if they made the final but i mean there can also be like some surprises i mean at the at the words in red one Mayfield was very fast in the final Dakota had an unbelievable speed so I think at the end everything is possible you just need to get used to it as fast as you can and then you need to have a good setup on your cars and as if that is the case I think everybody can do it of course I mean it's not like it's not like the guys from Europe that are going to be competing for world championship aren't going to be just amazing. I mean, you, you think about Ungaro, you think about Rona folk, you think about, um, Canoss and I mean, boots, yeah. any, anybody that can wheel a car. I mean, they, as long as they can just get enough knowledge and of figure course. it out, they can drive. So I think that's going to be real interesting. Cause we were, you know, I, I kind of giggled at the fact that people say that, you know, Americans wouldn't make that main. And, and I knew we'd, we'd, we'd have a few Americans that are with the potential of winning it. Um, obviously, three out of how many were at start of the main? 13 or 15? Um, 13. 12 plus one, one from the right, rest. So 13. So three out of 13 um, wasn't bad. I, I, yeah. I'm, we, you know, I'm sure there was a couple that – really felt like they should have been in there and, and, and most of the time should have or could have been in there. Of you know, course. Tebow, Rivkin, Cavallari. Those are some names that you would think should be in almost every final. Of course. Um, but they didn't, you know, and that's why Worlds is amazing because you've got so many entries. There's so many amazing, talented drivers. Yeah. You know, so... Um, but I like I like to see new people get their chance and, and, and have a really good run and, and make it in. You know, it was really cool to see uh, the Killets just do well, you know. Yeah. And I don't know them very well personally, and, you know, I got to meet them for the first time there. But just to see the excitement that they had when they made the finals. And um, I mean, one of the Baldo brothers made the final, I think. Yeah. Um, right? Didn't he, he out of the semi? Because I think he took his brother out to get into the final. I don't, I don't <laughs> know. I didn't see that, but could be possible. I'd I don't know. That. I can't remember. I could be wrong. But, um, yeah, I think it's going to be um, <laughs> I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to watch. And yeah, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where where things start going. Because that, that Worlds was between going to Beachline mm-hmm. and Hobby Action. And uh, I don't know how the decision gets made. But uh, it was, uh, you know, became instead of carpet, it's going to, to dirt. Yeah, I was never asked. I, I mean, full disclosure, they didn't want the, the best dirt in the country for uh, – the worlds, but I also don't have a great relationship with <laughs> Roar or uh, Ifmar at this current moment. So maybe next time. Maybe next time. You know, that's a long time from now before Worlds will come back to this continent. Um, what is so Masters? Going back to Masters, mm-hmm. we have uh, a unique way of doing things. Um, but I'd like to know, like, what was your 
favorite part of that race? I think it was the combination of serious racing and having a lot of fun. Because, I mean, on the one side, we had, like, um, we were racing for the Masters of Dirt title. You, We were racing for the win in the A-Mans. But on the other side, there were, like, funny events, like the hooligan race, the Dash for Cash races, the concourse for the best painted body. So I think that was a cool combination of everything. So it was not just... Um, I don't know how to say. S um, just like hard focusing on I want to be the best and I only focus on competition and stuff. So you could also really enjoy the other things. And yeah, in overall, it was a pretty fun and cool weekend. Nice. I mean, that's that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Like that. That's what the event was made for. So to hear you say it for your first time being here and, and to like you know to for you to experience it, it's it's good because that's. 100% what the it's supposed to be about. You're supposed to want to win it because it's serious. It's a it's a big title. Or the classes are stacked. But you also had a good time mm. not doing the conventional work, wrench, race, repeat. And work, I mean, wrench, race, repeat. Yeah. You know. And I mean, also, like, the atmosphere, especially, like, in the C-Man of me and Joey, it's like... And also, in general, the atmosphere. I mean, many people were cheering next to the track, and so... Also, like, that was a really nice experience because I think in in Europe you also have, like, cheering and a cool atmosphere, but this one I think it was very special and very unique. And um, I can say, like, the race was louder than normally because I would say normally it's, like, more quiet and stuff, and this time it was, like, more louder, more emotional. So that was pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, it's uh there's some characters, man. I did you ever get to um did did Lefty ever pull you to the side and interview you or did uh had things did you ever get any screen time on the coverage? Um I haven't I gone back and watched it yet. I'm I'm I, I gotta spend some time watching all the coverage. I had um an interview with um with Keen from No Name Broadcast. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. That was I think that was that and also um, Chris on Circus SC, I think I had a short time in his um, Facebook Live. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it was great to have Chris here. Yeah, Chris, of course. His, his photography is just best That's in the industry cool. right now. Yeah. Um, it's great to have Hannah with J Concepts doing her stuff. They did a lot. I mean, we had a lot of media, so mm -hmm. there's a, there's going to be – there. I know Lucas is going to be coming out with a post race uh, video for for our YouTube channel. Yeah, um, I saw he was also always running with the with the GoPro and like catched every moment on it. So yeah, well we'll find out what he caught because sometimes you know he's he gets the most magical moments and sometimes he's just running around and <laughs> you know just like I I, I I don't even know what kind of footage he actually has anymore. I never see half of it, but um, his videos are unique and. Uh, he puts out some pretty fun stuff. Um, I'm interested about the stuff he, he got from Fireball. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I don't know how much I'm going to allow him of that to put up. Cause, uh, so Fireball Friday has always been, we'll do a little bit of live. We'll, we'll have a little bit of fun. But once we're done with the race part and that side of things, like, no more. Like, everybody have a good time. Turn the cameras off. Turn the phones off. Let's... Let's have a social event. Yeah, enjoy um, life. A lot of people with headaches the next day, you know. Um, a lot of people wondering how I show up smiling every morning on Saturday. Every year um, I have a secret, and I can't tell anybody what it is, but uh, when I show up on Saturday, I feel amazing. So, <laughs> um, But the, the, the coverage was really good. I, I think that hopefully you're going to go home and you're going to say how amazing it was. Of course. I mean. And then we get a few more Europeans over here. I because hope so. that would be nice to have that, that full world class uh, combination of, of competition. I mean, I hope I can re I can return next year for the next Masters of Dirt. Of Dirt. And I, of course, if I can come, I will try to bring some SOX guy or other Europeans with me. Yeah. So. Well, I'll be working on Max all year. We'll get that. We'll get that ticket booked soon. Hopefully. The dates are already <laughs> already set. So, 
hopefully, uh, Sounds good. and we're going to make a big push this year. Um, you know, as BTRC, we're going to make a big push uh, mm-hmm. for S Works, and and yeah, really, absolutely. I think we're going to see some some new drivers. Um, yeah, so man, I've um, I've enjoyed my time with you. It's been fun. It, it's been. It was amazing. Yeah, it was really cool. I think that um, we have a. Uh, we've we've kind of formed a, a new relationship and course, uh, a new definitely. partnership, and uh, I I really feel good about um, you know what we're all doing together with the S Works side of things. And I'm not trying to make this an S Works promo by any means, but um, you know I I I'm looking very much forward to uh, seeing you again. Yeah. Um, if I don't see you at uh, the the carpet champs, but uh, definitely worlds, I'll be there and. Maybe oh. I will show up for some practice before the words. Okay. Well, I I don't I never know what. Hey. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know how much that's going to help you with our traction, but uh, well, depending on where we're at with the layout, you know, we have our our traction. It it fluctuates also, but on a race like what we had this weekend with that amount of entries and, and laps on it, it's we we know exactly what it's going to do. Yeah. But as it as we keep going on this layout it'll lose its traction because we'll just keep watering every day mm. and there's not enough laps on it yeah and, you know so we we know what it'll do it, it'll get the same way when we rebuild the track for palmetto classic in march and um but you know it's not near the entries so but yeah i mean we'd love to have you you should i mean you're welcome anytime um beach rc loves some uh Mitcha Vidmar. <laughs> and uh you know we'd love to you know, we're rooting for you. I'm, I'm hoping to, I'll watch you. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it down to Carpet Champs because we have a family vacation for Thanksgiving that we got to leave that weekend. So, um, but I'll be watching it for sure. Danny Paz uh, is doing that coverage down there too. Mm-hmm. Um, and he does, as we could see, you know, it's the first time yeah. we had him here, really amazing job. So I know I'll be able to watch the coverage um, and, and follow with you guys and, and cool. see how you guys are doing. So cool. Um. Yeah, you got anything else you want to say? Anything you gonna add? You got any plugs? You any any sponsorship plugs? Anything you want to throw out there? I think I did. At that point, I just want to thank you for the great for the great time I had here, for everything you did, for the hospitality, and for such a great event. Well, that's that's the easy part, man. It's my pleasure. So, well, thank you. Uh, I look forward to having you again. We got a long ride together, so yeah, we'll talk more. Of course. <laughs> awesome. Well, cool. Meet you, meet you, Vidmar. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're out.